Hey there fellow coding maestros and welcome back to the Average Joe Josie channel. Today we're back in the coding circus for video number 8 of our GDevelop platformer tutorial. We're dialing up the excitement by transforming our character into a legit animation star. No more static scenes, we're bringing those characters to life. So grab your coding gloves and let's get our hands dirty with digital grease. If you haven't already, be sure to catch up on those previous videos where we explored adding objects, crafting characters, setting up platforms and injecting behaviors. While it's not compulsory, but undoubtedly it will enhance your understanding as we navigate through the various windows and explore the assets we've already downloaded. So let's make sure we're on the same page before we crunch into the next exciting phase. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll answer as soon as possible. Today, we'll learn how to add the following to our main character. A jump animation, an idle animation, and a running animation. Step 1. Add a jumping animation to the player. In GDevelop, you can add animations to an object and trigger those animations when something happens. You know, like when a player jumps. To add a jumping animation to the player, we'll do the following. In the Objects panel, right-click the player object. Then, select Edit Object. Then click on add animation. Assign a name of jumping to the animation. Click add. From the file chooser select the p1jump.png asset. But although the animation is attached to the object, it won't play unless something triggers it. To trigger the jumping animation follow these simple steps. Switch to the events editor and then you create a new event. Add the is jumping condition to the player object. Add the change the animation by name action to the event. In the animation name field enter the name of the jumping animation. Then you click OK. So based on these changes the jumping triggers the animation. So now when you jump the animation changes to the jump sprite. Step 2 add an idle animation to the player. But wait there's a problem with the jumping animation. It doesn't reset when the player has finished jumping. To fix this trigger the idle animation when the player returns to the platform. We will do this by adding a new event with two conditions. The first condition must be that the player is on the platform, or as GDevelop knows it, on the floor. And then the second condition is that it's not moving, because remember the player can be on the floor but also moving. For that we'll add another running animation a bit later. But for now let's create this event with these two conditions and in actions when these two conditions are true. To detect when an object is on the floor we do the following, create a new event, Add the is on floor condition to the player object. To detect when a player is not moving, add the is moving condition to the player object. Then toggle the invert condition option to the on position. The invert condition option inverts the way the condition works. This means the is moving condition becomes the is not moving condition. So when both of the previous conditions are met, we need to trigger the object's idle animation. We add the change the animation by name action. In the animation name field enter the name of the idle animation. If you now preview the game the player object resets to the idle animation after jumping. Step 3 add a running animation to the player. Next up is to add the running animation to the player object. Here you have to go into the edit object of the player, add it animation and name it running. Click on the add sprite and then from the file chooser select all of the following assets. p1walko3.png right through to p1walko7.png. After this you then enable the loop option. This means when enabled the animation continually plays for long as it's active rather than only playing once and then stopping. And then you click apply. Now we have to trigger the running animation. We do this by creating a new event. We then add two conditions. Add the is on floor condition to the player object and then add the is moving condition to the player object. On the action side we then add the change the animation by name action to the event. In the animation field enter the name of the running animation and then you click OK. When you preview the game the running animation plays as the player moves. Updated extra step make the player turn around. But if you look closely now we've got another hiccup. When the player runs the running animation plays but when you press the left button you'll see that the player runs backwards. We'll need to fix this. 
We'll do this by adding two extra events. On the player object, select the key pressed or simulated conditions for the right button. And then in the action side, you choose the flip object horizontally. On the activate flipping setting, make sure that the setting is on no. With the second event, instead of doing everything over, you right click, copy and then paste that event. You'll see you'll have two of the same events now. So you'll have to go into the second event and then change the key pressed or simulated condition to the left button. And then on the event side, you now need to change the activate flipping setting to yes. Now, when you preview the game, your player can freely run backwards and forwards just as you please. How awesome is that? Well, 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 game geniuses. We've reached the end of another wild and wacky adventure in the world of game development. I really hope that this video has been your trusty sidekick on your coding journey so far. If it has been your coding sidekick, throw a high five at that like button. Hit the subscribe like a power up and make sure that that notification bell is ringing like a victory fanfare to stay in the loop with all the latest videos. Until our next rendezvous in the coding cosmos, keep those fingers tap dancing on those keys and those mice doing their little clickety clack dance.